Hi, this next video is on electronic uh, paper displays. I bought a whole bunch of goodies from Waveshare, like about a hundred bucks worth of stuff. Also some displays from Good Display. And I'm going to review these products, try them out, demo them, kind of speculate on what they might be useful for. Uh, so an electronic paper display um, is the same type of technology used in the Kindle, uh, also called electronic ink. And what it is, it's a display that is also called an electrophoretic display in that there are ink particles, the particles are charged, and by applying various voltages to cells in the panel, uh, you're able to make certain inks rise to the surface and other inks sink to the bottom. And you'll get this display uh, that the nice thing about it is that it um, does not require power to be persistent. So all of these hats and displays are not plugged into anything, yet you're still seeing images, like this one here, uh, this 2.3 inch flexible, uh, was last displaying a clock, you know, and the kind when I unplugged it is still there on the display. There's a couple different kinds of these you can buy. You can buy the two color ones, uh, so like this 4.2 and this 2.13. Those are black and white. And you can buy the three color ones, like this 2.3 uh, hat here is uh, yellow, black, and white, as is this 5.83. Um, this uh, 2.7 hat over here is red, black, and white. Um, some of them are flexible, like this 2.13. You can kind of flex it. I don't know how much you can flex it before you'd hurt it, but you can flex it a little. Um, other ones are rigid, like this uh, 4.2. That's rigid. If you tried to flex that, I think it'd crack. So they all have these uh, little uh, flex cables. Um, some of these, like this one, you can actually see some parts, some chips on flex. Um, you'll need a connector. Got a couple little surface mount connectors here that can be used. Uh, you'll need that connector to hook them up. Um, or you might want one of these uh, hats. So Waveshare sells these e-paper hats. It's got um, some driver electronics on here. I think the driver electronics, maybe it does level conversion and stuff. Um, a header for your Raspberry Pi. Um, a header if you wanted to hook it up to something not a Raspberry Pi. And then a cable that goes down here. Uh, to a connector where you connect your e-paper. So when I started this project, I knew nothing about e-paper displays other than I've used my Kindle and I think e-paper displays are cool and I wanted to come up with something to do. So what I decided I would do was to implement an e-paper Etch-a-Sketch. So here's an Etch-a-Sketch, um, official Etch-a-Sketch from the place that makes Etch-a-Sketches. I probably had one of these when I was a little kid. Um, as far as I can tell, the one today is very much like the uh, old time ones, there's a couple knobs. You turn the knobs and it's, uh, you know, it's drawing on the screen. Um, there's no power at all in an Etch-a-Sketch. This is, I don't know, maybe it's magnetic or something. I don't really understand the technology of how the Etch-a-Sketch works, but uh, this is going back decades and decades and decades. Uh, to erase your Etch-a-Sketch, you just Take it really good and, and the screen will erase. Um, so I kind of bought this one for my daughter. She's not quite ready for it yet. Uh, but I thought, you know, I'll take all these uh, WaveShare um, e-ink displays and maybe I'll try to implement an Etch-a-Sketch. So that turned out to be very much a problematic uh, project because when I started this I just didn't understand the technology. I figured that I could draw points on these things very quickly uh, when it turns out that some of these things are excruciatingly slow to update talking on the order like 10 seconds and you'll see that in some of the videos. If, if you want to implement one of these, uh, something on one of these displays, um, understand the technology, read the data sheets, watch the demos, um, and realize what you're getting in for. Uh, do some research. Hi, this display is the 2.13 inch flexible display. It says, uh, it's called flexible because it is indeed flexible. It's made out of some material that I can kind of flex. I don't know exactly how much I can flex it. Um, I'm not going to flex it a whole lot because I don't want to inadvertently destroy it or something, but if you had a project that had a little bit of curvature to it, it'd probably be good. Uh, it came with this little breakout board. Um, if you want, I believe you can hook it directly up to the board. It comes with this little extension cable, uh, so we'll use that. We'll attach this into here. Make sure to flip the little lever up. Got the little lever's flipped up. Now we can insert the flex connector in there. 
flip the little lever down. And this has a header that we can use to plug into the Raspberry Pi. So they used a surface mount header and I really don't like surface mount headers at all on Raspberry Pi hats because there's no way to replace this uh, with a stacking header. Um, we're just going to have to plug it in and it'll and then we won't be able to plug anything else in. So that's why I don't like the surface mount headers. Um, so this is my Pi uh, 3 back here. Um, it's in a case. I needed some additional height out of the connector so I do have a stacking header uh, plugged into there too, so that we can easily plug things in. Let me get something set on there to hold this down like this here scissors. Uh, there we go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work through the uh, WaveShare demo. So WaveShare, there's a whole bunch of demos on their website. Okay, so let's run the demo that goes with this particular display. So they've got demos uh, for the Raspberry Pi, they've got demos for the Arduino, the, uh, and the Raspberry Pi, they've got uh, demos written in C, demos using Wiring Pi, demos using Python. I'll run the Python one. Uh, so first it's going to clear the display. There's cleared. So there it displayed this black and white box thing. Um, I controlled seed the demo at this point uh, so that we can look at it because it's immediately going to go to the next image. Um, so one of the things you've noticed is it takes some amount of flickering every time this thing changes. Now it's displaying a WaveShare logo and now it's running a clock. So the 2.13 inch display is capable of partial update. You're seeing that um, in here in the final part of the demo where it's doing this clock. It's updating it at about one frame per second. Uh, and it's doing it smoothly and it looks pretty clear. So next up is the 2.13 inch three color display. It's a three color display because it does white, black, and yellow. Um, it has a hat built into it. Um, I don't know if it's like glued onto there, if you could separate this off if you wanted to or not. Um, again, it has the surface mount uh, header. Let's plug it into the Raspberry Pi. And what we're gonna see what we're going to see on the 2.13 inch is that the display update is much, much slower. Uh, so let's start it. <clears throat> okay, you can see it's doing a lot of flickering and that's just the process that it needs to go through uh, for the tri-color e-paper display. The additional flickering I think is because it has to kind of sort the ink particles so that you get the yellow ones where you're supposed to and you get the black ones where you're supposed to. Uh, but it takes many, many seconds to do one update. And finally we've got it. That's the first image uh, in the demo. Let me uh, cycle to the next image. So now you're seeing the process of uh, flickering and refreshing to draw a new image. And there it's got the blacks and it's working on the yellows. And that's it for the demo on this display. So you can see it takes a very long time uh, for it to refresh. From a user interface perspective, that's really, really cumbersome to deal with. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I would do a user interface where it takes on the order of 10 seconds to refresh something, maybe for a static display, this would be useful. So you have to consider what do they intend this product to be used for. And the one uh, use I've heard of is um, electronic labels in supermarkets and such. So you can think, you know, like a price label on a jug of milk, it might say, you know, a dollar. And then, you know, milk goes on sale, someone's got to run around the store and update all these price labels. So it's got like a big yellow sale and then, you know, 90 cents instead of a dollar. Well, if they use these e-paper displays for all of that, then some machine just in the middle of the night could just send signals to all these things and refresh them all, and they would display the latest thing. And you don't care, uh, if nobody's looking at it, that it takes 12 seconds to refresh. So I think that's the intended purpose of these uh, three-color displays. Not something that, you know, is user interactive, but something that uh, updates very infrequently and just sits there most of the time. So here is the uh, 2.7 inch. It comes with some buttons um, and it also is a hat. This is actually a through hole um, header on this one so we could desolder this and put a stacking header in if we wanted. That's kind of nice. Um, would it have been even better had they not put any header in there and just let us do it ourselves? Uh, so let's see if we can 
switch this over. Okay, let's run the demo program. Okay, so it is doing its usual flicker update. And it's done the blacks and it's reds, and like usual, it took several seconds to do it. I think it, it feels like this worked a little bit faster than the uh, 2.13, so that would be good. Um, let's try. Do the buttons do anything? I don't think the buttons do anything in the demo. Uh, but presumably we could read those if we had a program that was polling them. Let's tell it to cycle to the next image. Okay, there we go. Um, again, this did feel quicker than the 2.13 inch, though not necessarily a whole lot quicker. I would have to actually look at the video later and see if it did actually happen any faster. I think I do like the red and black and white better than the yellow uh, black and white. It's a good readable display with lots of uh, area, and it would be really easy to mount this on your Raspberry Pi. It even came with some... Uh, uh, package of standoffs here to stand it off from a Raspberry Pi at just the right height. So this is the 5.83 inch e-paper display. It's the biggest one that I ordered. Uh, you can see it's got the same um, hat and little cable and connector and stuff that I used with the 2.13 inch flexible. Um, you can interchange between the two I believe. Um, so we've got it plugged in. Uh, let's run it through its demo. So it uh, too seems to have a pretty long update, uh, maybe the longest update of any of the ones that I bought. Still working on it. You know what's over here? Okay, just some crud sitting on it. Okay, I think that's finished with the first image. This, of course, is a yellow, uh, black, and white. Uh, let's cycle it to the second image in the demo. Now we got to do the yellows. Okay, it's complete. Okay, so again, this is a beautiful display. It's very readable. It's got the multiple colors, which is nice. But like all of the other three color ones, it has really slow update refresh performance. Finally, we have the 4.2 inch um, two color display. Uh, this one's just black and white. I bought this one from a different company called Good Display. Um, you can see I was able to plug it into the very same um, hat and uh, connector board as the WaveShare displays. Um, so let's try it out with its demo. So that is the first image, came up very quickly. Uh, let's cycle it to the second image. And there is the second image, again, uh, very quick. Uh, that's just uh, inherent in the uh, two color displays. 
I really wish I knew if it was uh, possible to take the three color displays and just turn off one of the colors and get this refresh performance that you see on the two color displays uh, because this is uh, much much better from a user interface perspective just a couple flickers and a new image displayed um, person could deal with that you can't really deal with 12 seconds of refresh on the on the other ones so what I've learned from evaluating these products is that these two color displays uh, the refresh is just so much faster it makes them useful from a user interface perspective whereas the three color displays uh, the refresh is just so slow um, that from a user interface perspective couldn't really do anything with that interactively it's something that would have to be passively updated over time on its own can you do better? Um, I don't know. There's people who talk about partial refresh. Um, this one here is not uh, advertised as being capable of partial refresh, uh, but there is a guy on the web who figured out how to adjust the lookup tables on this 4.2 inch display to give you partial refresh capability. And that will lead us into the next part of this demo, which is I'm going to take one of these 4.2 inch displays and use it to implement an Etch-a-Sketch. Okay, now it's time to do the Etch-a-Sketch demo. So I've got it wired up here. So back here is my Raspberry Pi. I believe it's Raspberry Pi 3. Um, here's the WaveShare breakout board. Um, and here's a 4.2 inch e-paper display. We've got a couple of optical encoders here. Um, I bought these two optical encoders on eBay. These are 128 pulse per revolution uh, encoders. So each time you turn one full revolution, it'll produce 128 pulses. And we're going to use that as the X and Y controls for the e-paper. You can buy mechanical encoders. You get somewhere between like 16 and 32 pulses per revolution. On a display that's 300 by 400 pixels, you can imagine it take many turns uh, to move across 400 pixels at 24 pulses uh, per revolution. So these 128 pulse per revolution, they'll get us across the display in about three revolutions. Okay, let me actually start up the software now. Okay, I logged into the Raspberry Pi and I've started the software. Now we can uh, run it using these uh, two encoders. So, yeah, this one is the X encoder. You see it's moving across the bottom. Here's the Y encoder, so I'm moving up. Let's see if we can draw a box. So you can see the frame rate is fairly slow on this. We're getting like a couple updates per second. That means my uh, line is moving a little bit choppy. But it, it's kind of usable. And I think this is just about the best we're going to be able to do with this um, e-ink display. It's just uh, the nature of this display is that it does have a fairly low frame rate like this. So here we can move it really quick and generate kind of a scribble. Um, I've got a button here that I can push to reset. Um, you see, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bit of ghosting from the previous image, but it tends to go away as we continue to draw. And uh, since it's an e-paper display, if we unplug the power, normally I wouldn't do that to a Raspberry Pi, but what the heck, um, I've unplugged the power from the Raspberry Pi, the display stays on its most recent uh, drawn image, just like your Kindle would do. Okay, so I think this little project was successful. I did manage to produce an electronic ink uh, Etch-a-Sketch type device. Um, it does have two horizontal and vertical controls just like an Etch-a-Sketch. It kind of works like an Etch-a-Sketch does. Uh, the only issue with it is that the frame rate is kind of slow. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye!